Hey everybody, it's Katie with Picture Perfect Lawn Maintenance. I am back for part three of four in our Soil Sample FAQ series to bring you some more information on what is involved with a soil analysis and the corrective treatments that are recommended based on the results of that testing. If you have questions at any point in the video, you can pause it, go down below and comment. I will answer your questions to the best of my ability. And if my ability isn't good enough, I will find somebody whose is. I wanna make sure that everybody is understanding of this whole service and system because it's very complicated for how small a part it is in your program. In part one of the series, which you can view up here, we talked a little bit about what exactly a soil sample is, how it's taken, and everything that you need to know about that initial stage of the process. In part two, which you can view here as well, we talked a lot more about what is being analyzed, where it's being analyzed, and who's going to be interpreting those results for the homeowner to be able to understand what's going on with those results in their yard. In this part, however, and this is what I'm really excited about, we're gonna talk a lot more about the nitty gritty of how we correct any deficiencies that we see in the soil based on the soil analysis results. We're gonna talk about what might be causing the deficiencies as well as what's gonna happen if it's not something that you can necessarily afford. So if you have questions at any point, be sure to let us know. I'm gonna take a break. When we get back, we're gonna get into it. So if you remember from other parts of the series, whether you read the blog or you watched the other videos, a big thing that we compare soil samples and a soil analysis to is getting blood work done at the doctor's office. In part one of this series, we talked about how getting a soil sample taken is very comparable to getting your blood drawn at the doctor's office. And then in part two, we talked about how interpreting the results of the blood work is very similar to when we actually get the soil analysis back and the head of our fertilizer division is looking at it and figuring out what exactly is going on. It's an awesome diagnostic tool. And that's basically the focus of the whole service is to find out more objective information about what is going on underneath the ground where the nutrients are a big, big factor. So what is the next step if you go to the doctor and they see some issues with your blood work? They're going to prescribe treatments. So what exactly is the equivalent of that in a fertilizer program? A maintenance fertilization program is what is standard throughout the year in terms of the multi-application process of pretty typical basic treatments to maintain the current level or the status quo of the soil. If you have a healthy yard with good enough soil nutrients and a well-supported healthy turf, a maintenance application service is all that you need in terms of your fertilization. This is easily compared to the multivitamin that you would take or should be taking on a daily basis. It's got all of the standard levels of basic nutrients that you need to stay healthy and do what you need to do, but it's nothing extra strength or out of the ordinary. However, a corrective treatment is what a fertilizer professional will recommend when there are deficiencies in the current nutrients existing in the soil that the maintenance program isn't going to be able to bring up nearly as quickly. This is equivalent to when your doctor sees that there is a vitamin B12 deficiency on your blood work that's exposed. So in addition to your multivitamin, they recommend taking an extra dose of vitamin B12 to target that issue and get it addressed and resolved more quickly. If your soil analysis comes back and shows nutrient deficiencies in your soil, a corrective treatment that's recommended is either A, going to be in place of one or more applications of fertilizer from the maintenance program, or B, is going to be an additional application done in between to get some more product down. This just depends on what the issues are and what the corrective product being used is. These corrective products are usually going to be stronger and put down more heavily than a standard application would be. The strong majority of residential lawns actually do need some sort of corrective treatment at different points in the fertilization process. Whether they've never been fertilized before and so a lot of those nutrients that they need have left the soil, or they've been fertilized for a while but just something's gotten thrown off and it needs to be boosted back up more quickly, 
It's a very common thing. If you had a soil analysis done and corrective treatments are being recommended for your property, it's because the more aggressive approach to fertilizer is going to, in the short run, get you faster results than it would if you just stayed on a maintenance program. A strong fertilization company like Picture Perfect is going to have a robust maintenance program that is going to address any deficiencies over time. However, it's going to take a lot longer. It's kind of the slow and steady approach, whereas a corrective application being put into the program for the season is going to get you those results more quickly. So let's talk real quick about what we learned way back in middle or high school science class, which is what pH is. Basically, if you get the joke, then you probably don't need to listen to the explanation. pH is a measure of acidity. It's measured on a scale of 0 to 14, with 7 being neutral in the middle. If a pH is between 7 and 14, it's considered basic. If a pH is between 0 and 7, it's considered acidic. When we're looking at soil acidity, for turf type tall fescue, which is what we primarily grow in RVA, the ideal pH range is somewhere between 6.4 and 6.7. This is very slightly acidic. pH is logarithmic, which basically means that for every 0.1 increment, it's multiplying by 10. So the jump between 6 and 7 is actually very, very significant on a pH scale. So what does it mean when a soil analysis comes back and shows that the pH is below that ideal range for the type of grass that you're trying to grow? Well, soil acidity is a very, very common issue. That's why this question has its own little section because it's something that people see a lot. The reason being that pretty much every external force that is being applied to your lawn and to your soil is going to pull it down toward a more acidic level. Whether it is decomposing leaves and thatch from your grass, or it's acidic rain, or it's runoff from somebody else's yard, or even if it's fertilizer, or the waste products of tree roots. All of those things are naturally acidic and so that all kind of rolls together and ends up pulling the pH of your lawn down throughout the season. So if you have a soil that is already naturally tending toward acidity and there's not much that you can do about that and you just haven't had that intervention yet of getting a lot of basic products down, you're going to have a pH issue. The problem with having a low pH in your soil is that it is not at all habitable for the type of grass that you're trying to grow. A low pH is harmful to the good microbes that exist around the roots of your grass and support its healthy development. It binds up and mineralizes into a too complex state, a lot of nutrients like phosphorus that is important for your grass to absorb, but because it's bound up like that, it's not able to, so it's losing out on a lot of good nutrients that it needs. And a low pH contributes to an ideal environment, not for your grass, but instead for unwanted weeds and fungus and grubs, all of the things that make it even more difficult for you to get good grass to grow. The good news is if you have a low soil pH, it's pretty straightforward in terms of correcting that. A good turf management professional is going to look at what the coinciding values of calcium and magnesium are on the soil analysis to determine which type of lime is going to be best to put down to correct the pH of the soil. It also gives you some context. If you have a slightly low pH value but your calcium level is low and you have a really high magnesium value, there's a good chance that that magnesium presence is kind of artificially skewing the pH of your soil and it still does need some pretty aggressive correction to actually create a healthy environment in the soil. In a standard fertilizer program, there is a maintenance application of lime almost always built in. If you're signed up with a provider that isn't providing a maintenance lime application, you should look into that because it's a really important thing to regulate and keep balanced as much as possible. If you have a pH that is substantially low, so in the fives for example, odds are you're going to need a corrective lime in addition to your maintenance lime to pull that value up faster. Of all of the nutrient deficiencies and soil issues that we see coming back on a soil analysis report, low pH is probably the biggest one. If your pH isn't right, your lawn's not going to be right. So it's a really, really good thing to correct if you're able to identify it and get it treated. up 
on it already, soil science is a pretty complex and fickle thing. Just like with anything, you can have different values and different variables reflecting different things within the same analysis report. In your blood work, you can have perfect or high levels on a lot of things and still have a really low value over here. So don't be concerned or confused if everything on your soil analysis looks great except for one thing, or if vice versa, you've got this one great level over here but the rest of the report is really slacking. It's not anything that's necessarily wrong or weird about your yard, it's just what's going on. There's always going to be a way to fix it. If you work with a company like Picture Perfect Lawn Maintenance that takes numerous soil samples each year and kind of tracks how they're changing, odds are there's going to be some sort of trend in the data being shown that creates kind of some sort of predictability with what issues are going to be in the soil. In our area, in the RVA area, we have a big issue not just with soil acidity, but with very high magnesium levels and very low cation exchange capacities, or CECs. These are very, very common issues that we see and that we're able to just kind of plan to target, not only in how we adapt a little bit with our maintenance program, but also the products that we're able to keep on hand for when we have those expectations for what correctives we'll need season to season. What's pretty cool and gives you really neat context is that you're able to find from a lot of different places a map that shows kind of the geological starting point that your area has. In our area, if you go to the Virginia Department of Mines, Minerals, and Energy, or the Division of Geological and Mineral Resources, they have actually an interactive map that shows you what that deposit underneath the soil is in terms of is it limestone, is it sandstone, is it sand, is it gravel, what is it? And that gives us some context to what's going on with the soil. A big thing that we see in the area is a lot of sand and gravel, which lowers your CECs, and if you remember from a past video, that ends up impacting how much fertilizer and water is actually able to be retained in the soil. So there's a lot of different factors, not just on soil analysis, but in the environment that have to all be kind of rolled together when interpreting results like that. I want to show you guys at this point a couple examples of what we see on a soil analysis report and how we view them and how we usually try to correct them. This sample seen here in this picture is one that was taken from a local Swift Creek area property. As you can see, the only level that is high is the magnesium level, and it is really, really high. High magnesium usually is indicative of there being a pretty significant clay component to the soil composition. The big issue with this soil sample is the pH. A pH of 5.4 is very, very low, and that's probably a big reason that those other levels are showing as being insufficient. A, if there's low calcium, then there's probably going to be a lower pH because calcium is one of the main things that keeps the soil a little bit more basic. In addition to that, if the pH is this low, then odds are the acidity is causing the phosphorus and the potassium to mineralize with other elements into a form that is too complex for the grass to be able to actually absorb them. This shows that the available phosphorus and potassium is way lower than the fescue actually needs, and that's the important thing to think about. So instead of jumping to try to target the phosphorus, we're going to be targeting the pH first. If we can get the soil pH right, we're going to be able to see a lot more significant phosphorus uptake once the soil is actually at the right pH level. This next one that I'm showing you is a yard that's going to be a work in progress for a little while just because it's starting off from a really bad point. This is a property that odds are wasn't maintained in terms of a fertilizer program for at least its whole life. It's, it's probably not had much love. That being said, this is a yard that did sign up for corrective treatments last year, and after that we ended up seeing a pretty awesome turnaround once a full season had gone by. So check out the before and after picture right here as well. With a property like this, we pretty much target everything. So we're doing corrective lime treatments, we're doing corrective fertilizer treatments just to get some better things down so that all of those values can kind of go up at once. We're really excited to see what the soil evaluation for this property comes back with this year, so I'll try to keep you guys posted on those results once we get them in the next couple of weeks. 
This final soil sample is a lot closer to the range of values that we want to see for a property. Everything's looking good. The pH is still a little bit low, but the lawn itself looks really, really healthy because all of these nutrients are accessible. This is a property that's been on our fertilizer program for several years. It's a pretty long-standing client and the results really, really show. So whether you think so or not, it makes a big, big difference to have a good quality and organically based fertilizer company putting the nutrients down that your grass actually needs. We've all experienced the do you want fries with that sales tactic and it sucks. <laughs> Nobody likes to be treated that way because it makes you feel like you're just a piggy bank that somebody's trying to withdraw from over and over and over again. If you are a homeowner investing in a soil evaluation, there's a reason. You want to know more about your soil. That's why in the last video I preached so hard about making sure that your fertilizer company is sending you those results so you can be an active participant and see them with you. If you are a service provider, don't upsell your clients. Educate them and make sure that they understand what ancillary services are available and why they're being recommended. As the Director of Marketing and Sales for Picture Perfect Lawn Maintenance, it hurts my feelings a little bit when people use the word upsell in regard to corrective treatments because that's not what we're trying to do. It really, really isn't. So I appreciate this question being asked because it gives us the opportunity to really look into where we're coming from as a company and why we're making these recommendations in the first place. Bottom line, instead of looking at it as an upsell, there are three big points that I want anybody receiving corrective recommendations from a fertilizer company to consider. First, even though corrective treatments usually do come at an extra cost to your maintenance program, that's simply because the products are stronger and therefore more expensive as well. It's just like with anything, if there's a cost, it has to translate. Second, corrective treatments are not obligatory. You don't have to sign up for them and a good maintenance program like Picture Perfects will eventually yield the same results. It's just gonna take longer. Third, corrective treatments are recommended simply because professional lawn care providers want to see success for your property. That's our goal. That's why you hired us. That's why we do this kind of work. We want those results. We literally live for it. When our family comes to visit from out of town, there's a good chance we're taking them through your neighborhood so we can show off our work. It's a big thing for us. So corrective treatments are just a quicker way for us to get those results, not for just ourselves, but for you as well. There is always an alternative. I never want anybody that works with Picture Perfect Lawn Maintenance to think that it's either ride or die in terms of having to have us do a service that is supplementary to a maintenance program. If corrective fertilizer treatments are out of the budget or if what's left of your lawn care budget is going to be better spent on things like fungicide or something like that, then there are corrective options that you can do yourself. The head of our fertilizer division, Brandon, is always more than happy to talk to homeowners that we're making corrective recommendations to about what the DIY options are, especially where lime is concerned, because that's just buying one bag and dumping it down. He'll tell you what to buy, he'll tell you what rate to put it down at, and it's usually going to be a little bit less expensive than if we did it for you. The only catch is it then takes your time, which I'm sure is valuable, and you have to be confident and able to put it down. If you ever want to explore those options, we're always happy to talk with you about what the options are to make sure everything is out on the table and that your lawn is covered as best as possible. At the end of the day, corrective fertilizer treatments are a valuable acceleration to the fertilizer process in terms of building a healthy and sustainable soil and lawn. However, they're not the end-all be-all. A good maintenance program is going to be what's most important still because that's what's going to be the bread and butter of your turf. Taking a soil analysis is important because it gives us the opportunity to employ corrective treatments as needed, but what happens on a year-to-year -year basis as this process extends and draws out? Do you always see fast results from a corrective treatment? Is the next soil sample going to be a huge improvement? 
movement and what happens if it moves backwards. There's a lot of questions in the long term that we're going to be looking at in the next video. So be sure to stay tuned. That's going to be coming later this week. And like I said before, if you have questions, comment below. I want to know what you're thinking. Obviously go and subscribe. Nobody's subscribing anymore and it hurts my feelings. So if you're already subscribed, make sure that you get somebody else to subscribe. This is awesome information that a lot of people don't know and it's very, very valuable when you consider the investment that you're making in the care of your lawn. I hope everything's looking good for you this winter still and I hope you have a picture perfect day. We'll be back with you in a couple days for the last part of this series.